Good afternoon, glampers. So you've got yourself a tent, you've got yourself a rucksack, you've got yourself your mat. What are you going to use to cook your food? Well, I'm going to show you a couple of wee uh, alternatives. And it's the equipment I use most if I'm wild camping. If I know Ben's going to be with me, I don't have to worry too much about uh, cooking. Other than just to make myself a coffee if he's crashed out somewhere, still asleep or up before him in the morning or whatever. It just took us quite a Baltic Sunday afternoon. It's actually trying to snow here at the minute. In fact, there's very small, fine snow at the minute. So anyway, we'll crack on here and uh, we'll have a quick look at some alternatives. Uh, some expensive and some not so expensive, but all equally have their own, their own little job to do in the campsite. So let's just have a wee look at them now. So first up is a little, little gas stove. Uh, this folds up and it comes with its own little box. I think I paid, I think, about 15 quid for it on on Amazon. Uh, I took a chance because it's a I think it's a knockoff of the MSR Pocket Rocket. But I mean, I've been using it for four years. Everything works. Couste hasn't let me down yet. So basically, it's all you do. Turn on your gas regulator. And to ignite it. So you can see that just... Oof, there we go. Uh, turn it up. Without burning yourself. And there she goes. So you can stick a frying pan on it, you can stick uh, your teapot on it, uh, a billy can, boiled water, your stew, whatever. Very simple and easy to use little piece of kit. You can also get uh, those, I have one somewhere in the house but I couldn't find it. Excuse me, uh, just a wee windshield if it's breezy. Or if you're using it in the vestibule of the tent then you'll not need the windscreen. But very handy wee job and uh, say it weighs virtually nothing and switch it off just switch off the gas the little legs all fold down the regulator wraps the regulator wire wraps around it and goes into this little box which again uh, very handy for storage so that's one gas option so the next option another gas option is a favourite with a lot of uh, peak hikers uh, who like light weights and they need something hot very very quickly. This will heat uh, a litre of water in about two or three minutes and if you need just a coffee and enough water for a coffee about one minute and it's roasting. So it comes in its own drinking cup. You have a little part at the bottom to protect the unique funnel design for, I think it helps the, uh, the heat convection. Pop the lid off, stores the gas inside, pop out the actual burner itself, comes with a little stand, just opens out. Clip your gas into it and then screw on the burner, which I find to be a little bit fiddly at times, it's just because I'm cack handed. Oh, come on, get in. So we better just to get that thread started. Yeah, making a complete hash of this. There we go. My hands are cold, it's Baltic. Right, so that's on. You'll get a wee squish as the seal breaks. Make sure that's off. Now, unfortunately, this one does not have a, a piezo igniter, so you have to light that with a lighter. Most of them do. I went for the cheaper version. I think I paid 80 quid for that particular model. Uh, the more expensive ones have the little piezo igniters. So again, it's basically just a matter of turning on the gas.
There we go. And then that pops in and twists around it up. I have no water in it now, and because I have no water in it, it'll only burn the bottom of it. But there's the gas going, and you can actually get purpose-built little frying uh, kits for these here, where it will uh, clamp on the top, it's like a little tripod job, it clips on the top, and you can put a frying pan on. If you were to put the frying pan on just now, on top of it, uh, you'll put it out. So another very lightweight and a very economical gas part cooker. It's good for your boiling the bags, uh, which I would use it for mostly, and for making coffee. Let's say you have an ample, this is a cup with neoprene covering on it, which keeps, once it ends, keeps it, that holds a litre. So a litre of coffee, I think would do, not a litre, what am I talking about? 500, 500 millilitres, half a litre. So as I say, pops on there, pop your lid on, boils in a couple of minutes. Another very good piece of kit. Bit on the pricey side, but if you want coffee quickly, it is excellent. So that's a second gas part option. So another little alcohol stove, meth stove, is the Lexada. And it's actually quite good. The wee uh, legs there you see pop round. Like so, you get the idea. So it's actually, uh, oop, comes like that there. Very lightweight. So pop the little legs, support sides. These actually double up as a little pot stand, frying pan stand. Take the lid off. You will notice there's little jets around the side. So you fill it three quarters full with uh, meths, light it, let it bloom, and when it's, uh, well, if you have a calm day, I have no windshield today. Uh, uh, so when it actually blooms, which means then that the, there's enough vapor, uh, heated vapor, that it'll actually come out the little holes around the side as little jets, almost like gas, and it's quite an efficient little burner. And I'll show you that working now. Lighting it uh, for a rod, it'll take a spark. Uh, the thing with meth is it's a very, very colourless, almost colourless flame initially. Uh, so don't be tempted to top it up with meths. Make sure it is completely out. Extinguishing it, I'll show you how to extinguish it later. Just pop the lid on. Now the lid's not sealed, so you cannot transport it with meths already in it. But yeah, a very efficient and small very lightweight little offering from Lexida. I think I paid 16 quid, I think it was a wee promotion, I got 4% off or something like there. I think I had about 15 or 16 quid. So, quite a nice little bit of kit. And quite efficient if you want to go the, the alcohol or the meths route, meth fuel route. So as you can see, after it blooms, you'll get the uh, flames coming out uh, quite vibrantly out of the little jets, the little holes around the sides of it, almost like a gas. As I say, you would need a little windshield today like today, or in the vestibule of your tent. And to extinguish it, all you do is put the lid on. Simple as that. That's it out. So another nice little piece of kit. So next bit of kit. I know, like myself, a lot of you like to go down the uh, the army surplus route. And I happened to be in Belfast. I was looking through the, the scout shop in Belfast, which is just opposite the um, uh, the opera house. Uh, they have a section up the stairs devoted to army surplus. And I picked this this whole kit up here: uh, the windshield, the transio burner, and the the flask kit uh, with the kidney mug. There's a water bottle inside, I'll show you in one second. I think I paid 15 quid for the whole lot. Absolute gift. So basically, 
Again, you have another alcohol burner. Now there's a seal here, which means you can actually store your meths inside. There's the seal. So you can keep your meths in here, ready to go. So we'll open that up. We'll open this up. Sturdy, sturdy, sturdy piece of kit. Clip onto your, strap onto your rucksack. Nice metal clip. It's for actually, for the, it's actually quite light. I was surprised how light it is. So that'll pop out. This will slide out. You can see I've used it a few times. So you have your a water bottle, another mess mug. Just pop that there out of the way for the minute. So inside the windshield, you'll set your burner at the bottom, like that. Fold these little stands over, light her up. And there's your soup or your beans or your sausages and beans, whatever you're cooking up, your stew. Just burn it away and you have the, the windshield around it. For 15 quid, my goodness. And I have used this quite a lot, so I have when I'm away soloing without filming. And uh, it's a really nice, versatile piece of kit. So we'll give it a wee light up. Oops, we'll give it a wee light up. And we'll do ourselves a brew. So, put some meths in that. So this is actually a German army surplus and you get the little groups. Got the little fuel bottle with it as well. Just a note, when you're topping it up, it'll gradually sink down to fill the actual reservoir. So what I'll do is I'll be on the safe side, I'll extinguish that and I'll top it up again. Without setting myself on fire, hopefully it's out. So you can see the meth just sits at the top there, but then it gradually moves down into this reservoir here. So you get a quite a substantial uh, top up of fuel. So we'll light that up again and wait for it to bloom and then we'll set the the windshield on it. Doubles up as a windshield and as I say put your your mess cup on it for your brew. So the little windbreaker is doing its job. Uh, the meth is burning away, they're just waiting for it to bloom. When it does, the flame will then come out under pressure through the little jets around the top of it. So yeah, excellent little bit of kit from the German military. Cheapest chips, uh, very practical and brilliant for wild camp and bushcrafting. And it's not particularly heavy at all. It's very cheap, uh, lightweight, I say cheap, very lightweight uh, materials. The windshield is a wee bit of a Awkward shape, but little canvas tote bag uh, stored in the bottom of a ruck. As I say, you're not going to be taking all of these options of cooking with you. You'll choose whatever type of camp you want, and you will bring whatever bit of kit you need that suits the camp that you're on. So we'll just come back when that has bloomed, and we'll do ourselves a brew. So that's a little burner blooming now. Uh, you get the flames coming out of the jets. Not sure the camera will pick it up too well. So what we'll do is we'll just uh, we'll make ourselves a brew. Just bring this out a little bit. Just water. And just pop it on. So handy for sausages and beans, stews, soups, etc. that you've maybe pre-made or make at camp. You're also just heating up a good old mug of hay or coffee. 
and cheap as chips. Say army surplus section of the scout shop in Belfast. I haven't been in there for well, at least a year, so I don't know what they carry now. It is uh, they've got new stuff in, etc., etc. But you can get all sorts of kit and bits and pieces and webbing, and always worth a, a wee nosy round. Any time I'm in around that area, obviously <laughs> post lock or pre lockdown, I would have went in had a wee had a wee Jeff Duke round. You always get a bargain, you always get something, a little bag or a haversack or something. So we're going to have a boil on there, less than, I would say about four minutes or so, and it's just boiling away nicely. Excellent job. Excellent job. As I say, if you're in very cold weather and you're cooking in your vestibule, it does provide you a little bit of heat with inside the tent as well. And with the uh, the windshield on it, it will protect any stray flames from shooting out against the side of the tent. Yeah, great wee bit of kit. As I say, cheapest chips, army surplus, German army surplus, uh, I suppose you can British army surplus, uh, whatever army surplus takes your fancy. At the end of the day, suits your budget. Uh, but it's good enough for armies around the world. It's good enough for wild campers and bushcrafters. I always say, and you can save a fortune on uh, the uh, conventional marketed uh, gear, which can be quite expensive. So we'll have a look at another option. So the first two were gas options. These two are fuel. Uh, alcohol stove options, methylated spirits. Uh, we'll have a look at the Firebox XL, which is a wood burning twig stove. I would say fuel for it is free because you just pick up your twigs and sticks around your forest. So we'll have a look at it now. So Firebox XL, uh, made by Bushcraft Essentials. Folds down flat, comes in its own little canvas pouch. Uh, very economical, uh, your fuel is free as you're processing little twigs and dead wood from around the forest bed. So it's just a matter of feeding it, little twigs, and uh, you can cook full dinners, boil water, just everything a stove will do. So we'll get her fired up here and uh, we'll uh, have a look, see how it burns. Of course, the other advantage with the firebox is that it does give out a really nice heat. So if you arrive at camp late, and to let to put on a fire, you can just fire this up, make your evening meal, and then just keep feeding it little twigs and, and sticks, and you have a nice source of heat. Obviously, you're not bringing it into the tent. <laughs> I'll just say that now, just in case somebody is inclined to do that. But yeah, just keep feeding it. It's a nice source of heat, and it's more than ample to fry up a, a nice mixed grill on a frying pan, or you can actually put the grill on top or do a few burgers. But yeah, cheap to run, free to run, basically. And you get that lovely, lovely ambient heat as well. Uh, when you're finished, there's a little ash pan at the bottom where all the it's very it's very economical burner, so you're not left with any bits and pieces of sticks. It uh, burns and converts all that you put into it into a nice fine ash, which is collected at a little tray at the bottom, and you just uh, find your little spot and bury your ash. But great wee piece of kit, lovely ambience around the around the campsite. And as I say, cheap to run. Uh, they are expensive, that's the only downside to them. For the Firebox XL, I've seen them on Amazon for, I think we're up to about 130 quid now. You can get a smaller version, uh, which is uh, 70, 80 quid. You can also get, uh, this one weighs at 800 grams. You can get a, a titanium version, which is super, super light. Uh, but again, it's ridiculous money, so it is. Uh, I've been using this now for you know, two or three years, and I mean it, it doesn't warp. I mean the materials, the metal that's made of, you know, 
and there's no warping like some of the, the cheap knockoff Lexidia ones that you'll buy and the Chinese knockoff ones, they first burn and the whole thing's warped out of shape. This will not warp out of shape. And there's a few various wee bits and pieces of accessories you can get, little extra trivets uh, for putting a uh, grill on too. There's a little grill plate you can see in the foreground there. It sits on top where you can stick a burger on or a steak and have it flame grilled. But uh, yeah, it's an expensive item, but uh, you buy quality, you only buy it once. Uh, you buy cheap, you buy twice. So yeah, highly recommend it. Uh, I would probably use this uh, quite often. Uh, as I say, if I'm out soloing, uh, I would use this here just for the ambience of it, the campfire, the heat. Uh, as I say, but when I'm out with Ben, uh, we do a lot of grill cooking and uh, Dutch oven cooking. Well, we we'll say we, Ben does. <laughs> uh, so another thing on my list, and funny enough, I've just ordered it up there on Amazon this morning, uh, is a folding grill. Uh, it, it folds up, slides it, and you just put it over your fire. Yeah, you low ember fire, and you can cook your steaks and burgers and sausages, whatever, on the grill. So uh, looking forward when that arrives, uh, see how it goes. Uh, other thing I want to get is one of the small Petromax Dutch ovens, but again, there's a weight penalty with them, they're extremely heavy. But my goodness, uh, you cook anything in those there, just have your fire going, roaring, uh, section a, a bit of your fire off uh, for hot embers, and just uh, throw your Dutch oven into the middle of it there and cook away, or you can suspend it over the flame. But uh, as you see there, there's a nice uh, ash, uh, embers there now where you just stick your pot over that there now or put the grill on, stick your steak on uh, and off you go so yeah, another bow to the I don't know, arrow to the bow of uh, wild camping cooking alternatives so for each of those um, alternatives that I've showed you there's loads of different brands and makes different various and prices and what not to know, these are just ones that I have used and stuck with, uh, don't really need any more, as opposed to maybe just getting that grill uh, for the fire and the, uh, the small Petromax, Petromax Dutch oven. So just a very quick rundown on uh, a few bits and pieces that I use uh, for my wild camps. Uh, I know for most of you it'll be like showing you how to suck eggs, but uh, for those who are just getting into wild camping, bushcrafting. It offers up uh, a few uh, a few options for you uh, for cooking. Uh, you can go the gas route, which I uh, expensive enough, I suppose, with a little canister test. One of those wee small canisters of gas probably last year a week. Uh, reasonably frequent use. Uh, you know, I'm not talking about cooking up steaks or anything out there, but certainly you're boiling the bags and your brews. Uh, so I suppose they're, they're not too expensive. The, the methylated spirits, if you can buy meths in bulk, in sort of litre type containers, or even the uh, gallon uh, containers of meths, uh, it'll work out economical in the long run. And the, the last option there, the twig stove, is basically your fuel's free. You're just using your twigs and whatnot. So hopefully it'll be helpful for, for somebody. Uh, as I say, for most of you, it's just uh, sucking eggs. So look after yourselves, look after each other, and I will see you on the next one, which I'm not sure where it will be or what it will be about yet, but uh, it'll be some sort of cack, I'm sure. <laughs> Listen, thanks very much for watching. Uh, as I say, stay safe and uh, God bless. I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.